Mount Everest is a beautiful mountain, the dream of every climbers. It's not very technical, but it's very tiring and hard to climb, and claims many climbers. That's why it's the place where the most mountaineer stories are concentrated. Stories of life or death. Everest is the highest mountain on the earth, but is it also the most dangerous? Let's see in detail. The mountain has a death rate of around 6%, which places it at medium-low level of chance of dying. Other mountains have a much higher death rate, up to 30%, as in the case of Nanga Parbat and Annapurna. By 2019, over 7,000 summits have been recorded by over 5,000 different people. Despite two years of disaster, more than 200 people have lost their lives trying attempting to reach the summit. Technically, the Everest is not a difficult mountain to climb. For non athletes this attracts worthy and not too experienced mountain climbers, and this is a big problem. Most deaths have been attributed to avalanches, jarring from form, cyrax collapse, exposure, frostbite, or health problems. Not all bodies have been located, so details on those deaths are not available. The upper reaches of the mountain are in the Dea Zone. The Dea Zone is a mountain in terms of altitudes, above a certain point, around 8,000 meters or 26,000 feet, where the oxygen level is not sufficient to sustain human life. Now we can see the caves of death. On June 1922, while George Mallory, two British Tiamatis and 14 Sherpas were plodding through waste depth snow, approaching the North Pole at 23,000 feet, they heard a loud report and the mountain started sliding over them. A massive avalanche sweep away nine of the porties, flashing them into a crevasse a few hundred feet below. Remarkably, the Surrey was managed to find two of them alive, but the remaining seven were left on the mountain where they died, Mallory blamed himself for the accident. In 1982, when the British duo Peter Boardman and Climb Instructor and Joe Tosker, a four-minute seminar standard, set out to talk the pinnacles, a first on triad of sharks teeth jutting out the Everest Northwest Ridge at nearly 26,000 feet. They were two of the most promising alpinists the sport ever ever seen. Despite the seriousness with which they approached climbing, they had the right sense of humor of where not to keep life a base camp light and fun. On May 17, the pair left their high camp on the northern ridge, and after 40 hours of climbing above 8,000 meters, were enveloped in darkness. It will never be clear what happened after that. In the 1992, a team of Kazakh climbers discovered Birdman's body sitting peacefully near the base of the second pinnacle. Joe Tasker was never seen again. In 1974, an ambitious expedition led by Frenchman Gérard de Vosieux set out to make a complete ascent of the mountain for Medebo West Ridge. De Vosieux and 19 team members intended to strengthen the road out. They arrived late in August after they opted the monsoons which regularly deposited them stable snow across the mountain's flanks. They knew the weather would be a gamble, but they didn't count on losing. The monsoons kicked back in while the climbers were spilled across three high camps. During the night of September 9, a large avalanche flashed over the tents, barring the Vosux and five Sherpas. They were never found the debris. It was one of the worst single incidents were recorded on the peak. 
and climbers avoided the West Ridge for the next five years. The year 1970 was a busy one on the mountain. Several large expeditions were stationed on the south side, including Japanese Sky Expedition, starring Yoichiro Miura. This mean upwards of 150 people would have to pass through the Kumbu Ice Fall, the ever shifting river of ice that has become one of the most dreaded and lethal features of the route. On April 5, a large avalanche is sweeping to the ice fall, hiding Sherpas from the Sky Expedition. Six were lost. It was the worst tragedy to befall the Sherpa community since the 1922 British Expedition. In May 2004, a 69 year old pathologist from Alexandria reached the summit of Everest via the Southwest Ridge. It had been a long, arduous climb, and Nils Santezan had hired a the name Gustavo Lisi. To help him. But on the way down, Antezana became disoriented, perhaps suffering from the once celebrated edema, and collapsed near the balcony several hundred feet above the Iges Club. Trochu Sherpa attempted to revive him, they and Lizzie eventually left the doctor in the snow and continued to camp. Lizzie, who claimed he was their tyrant, filed to inform anyone else at the camp for of his client's condition. When climber ascended the ridge the next morning, Ante Zen had one sheet. While the with the client relationship, however, as endures scrutiny as keeping cheese, this was one of the first instances where the accusation went beyond mere negligence to claim criminal behavior. An investigation from the family finally petered out, but Lizzie's reputation was ruined, and the story has cast a pall over commercial climbing on Everest ever since. In 2006, a long British climber named David Sharp became the focus of one of the most intense and protective controversies in Everest history. Early on the morning on the May 14, Sharp was discovered near Comatose in a small alcove high on the northern ridge. He had been climbing solo, only loosely affiliated with a low-budget expedition of independent mountaineers. There was no one reported him missing, and it took several days before Nyon called have a figure out of the climber was. But his identity would make no difference. Sharp would not survive, even though he was passed by an estimated 40 plus climbers that day, only a few of whom attempted to revive and more him. The incident apparently even worse a week later when the Australian climber Link Hall was rescued under what appeared to be similar circumstances. Could more have been done to save Sharp? Should more have been done? Did other climbers have more obligation to help a stranger who seemed closer to death than life? The media chaffed on and the real red pointing fingers, leveling blame and the big money expedition that walked past the Brighton. But like many things, the account was full of complicated details and deeper explanation. In the end, Sharp would become the fallen protagonist of one of the Everest's most vivid and disturbing parables. And now we can see a summary of the date. On fire April 1970, during the production of The Man Who Skied Down Everest, six Nepalese Sherpas died on Mount Everest. The deaths were caused by an ice fall avalanche in the Kumbo Ice Fall. The ice fall, which lies between Base Camp and Camp 1, has been the seat of numerous fatalities, including those in the 2014 Mount Everest ice avalanche. The Sherpas were assisting the Japanese sky expedition, which included Yuichiro Miura, the first person to sky down Everest. On 9 September 1974, the West Ridge direct on Mount Everest was attempted by a French expedition. It resulted in the deaths of six climbers in avalanche on the way to the summit. These deaths took the total number of fatalities on the mountain to 36.
The 1996 Mount Everest disaster occurred on 10-11 May 1996, when eight people caught in a blizzard died on Mount Everest during attempts to descend from the summit. Over the entire season, 12 people died trying to reach the summit, making it the deadliest season on the Mount Everest at the time. The disaster gained wide publicity and raised the question about the commercialization of Everest. On 18 April 2014, Serax on the western spar of Mount Everest failed, resulting in the an ice avalanche that killed 16 climbing Sherpas in the Kumbo Ice Fall. This was the same ice fall where the 1970 Mount Everest disaster had taken place. 13 bodies were recovered within two days, while the remaining three were never recovered due to the great danger performing such an expedition. Many Sherpas were injured by what they saw as the Nepalese government's major offer of compensation to victims, families, and threatened a protest of strike. On 22 April, the Sherpas announced they would not work on Everest for the remainder of 2014, as a mark of respect for the victims. During the afternoon of 25 April 2015, a magnitude 8 earthquake struck Nepal and surrounding countries. Shaking from the quake triggered an avalanche from Kumorin to base camp of Mount Everest. At least 22 people were killed, surpassing an avalanche that occurred in 2014 as the deadliest disaster on the mountain. 